Hi, welcome to Let's Talk, an NTU SU initiated series focusing on youth centric issues. In this year's series, we'll be talking on the topic of mental health. I am Chloe and I'll be your moderator for today's video. And joining me are our two very dashing and established guests, Jafan and Joel. Let's give them a warm welcome. So, before we kick things off, let's start with a round of introduction. So, let's maybe start off with Zafan. Okay. I'm Zafan Raizat. I'm 25 this year and I play football professionally. I play as a goalkeeper in my team currently in Tanjung Pagar United. About mental health in football perspective, in Singapore especially, it, I consider it, it as it's more open now. They used to not be like, okay, when they had a bad game, they would just keep it to themselves. I would say it's good, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's really great to hear. And yeah. I think it's really insightful, especially on a scene that not many people know about yeah. the general public. Okay, now let's move on to Joel. All right, hi guys, my name is Joel, and I am Tajong Paga FC's biggest fan. No, I'm just kidding. So, I'm actually from NTU as well. Um, I graduated in 2018, and I'm now running Zerap Media with two friends who are also from NTU, and we are running Zerap Media, which is a digital media and creative house. And on the side, I actually use my own platform to talk about social issues as well, and also like things like mental health and whatnot. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, thank you so much for all that introduction. So, now let's get down to business. So, today we'll be just having like a conversation between each other about mental health in your respective careers, of course. So let's start off. So as public figures, both of you are have your own platform, your own following. How do you cope with the stress or like, you know, the pressure of having all that attention on you? You want to go first? You go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so throughout the years here and there, I've picked up a few followers and all that. I mean, there are hardships like having a bad season, a bad game. And of course, I just recently um, Owadi is from NS. So um, I didn't play football for a year. It's been a roller coaster ride for me in terms of where I am now. I mean, like I look at NTUSU and I'm like really appreciative of initiatives like this. Organizations can help. So whether it's in sports, whether it's in media and entertainment, whether it's in school, I think it's so important for whoever's um, arranging and organizing things to be able to then say, okay, mental health is a priority. Let's do initiatives like this. You know. So maybe about you yourself and like how you manage your own um, like following or like maybe how you've seen other influencers or public figures like or your friends who are also in this position. Like how do they manage that? Yeah. yeah. So in my own personal capacity, I, I guess um, the following came in GE 2020, where I was talking about like politics and whatnot, and it just all came within one week. So it's kind of like a lightning in a bottle kind of situation, and I was entirely unprepared. Um, but I guess the experience in the media industry kind of allowed me to understand what it's like to be in the spotlight. Um, and I, during that period, I think it was really quite overwhelming because I was not used to you know being in front of the camera, I'm usually behind. Um, but I think the support system of like talking to friends who are away from the social media space and also then seeking um, advice and also support from people who are, who are in front of the camera who have experienced all these kind of things and asking them like how do you deal with this, you know, what, what kind of mindset should you be in, like those really helped as well. Okay, yeah, I definitely agree. I do feel like, you know, talking to other people, like stepping away from like all that, I think really helps because you know, at the end of the day, we're all humans. So the next question will be, how did you cope when you were faced with people, maybe your own friends, family, or even just the general public who don't support you? So um, I think one of the, thing, the best things, or the best advice I got was turning it around and, and reframing your mindset, right? So if, if I ask myself today, have I ever criticized someone that I, whose content I've seen online? Have I ever said, I don't like this person, I, I don't vibe with their content, even though I don't know anything about them, I don't know them personally, Personally, like yes, the answer is yes. So I guess by understanding that when you're putting yourself out there, you're just letting the public have formed their opinions about you. So the, the the advice that I got then is just to make sure that when you know that this is happening, what kind of um, stop gaps can you put in to make sure that you know this um, won't actually affect you uh, that badly. For some, it's time out from social media. For some, it's you know friend time in person. For some, it's alone time. So it's really understanding yourself and what works for you. For me, basically, it's my profession doesn't last long. So it only stretches until your certain age, like probably I say like 30 plus or something. So of course there are talks between my like I say family, friends. They say like, oh, is it gonna be like a long term thing for you? So in my head, I'll be like, it's okay, it's, I, I'm not here to please anyone basically. Tell them like, as long as I know that I'm doing good on my own, like I'm not bothering you as much, so it, it's okay for me. So yeah, of course there's a good support system in my family and my friends. So for me, I will just 
talk to them and basically ask them like, is this what, is this, a, is this good, is this bad? I think at the end of the day, it's just like knowing who you are. Yeah. But I think in this current day and age, it's really hard, especially on the prevalence of social media and everything. Everyone is criticizing each other. We're open to the public to like, for them to say whatever they want. I think that, you know, with TikTok and, and the idea that everyone can go viral, everyone's got to get a 15 minutes, you know, you don't really need to be a public figure anymore to be subjected to public opinion. Uh, I, I do think that um, more people should start understanding that okay, that time might come, so let's you know, prepare ourselves for that. Because I wasn't prepared and I, I wish I, I, I was more prepared. Yeah. Like throughout this journey of like, your career, so pursuing whatever you like to do, like, have you ever felt um, isolated? I was 17 years old at the time and all my teammates were basically like 30 years old and all that. So for me to step into that, that team, it's, I kind of felt lonely. Lah. But then again, my, the players around me were like so supportive of me being as a young player and, and the coach also was Fandi Ahmad at the time. It was a good time for me to be down there at that, at that point of time, basically. Yeah, for, for me it was, I think when everything happened, it was during circuit breaker and uh, you, you really just can't go out. But speaking of loneliness, I think I remember on the whole, during circuit breaker, a lot of people were really lonely because you have to be in, like at home, right? Um, and I think that, that is actually what spurred my team and I to start this podcast called the Mindful Minutes Podcast. It's about mental health. We also recognise that the overall morale of Singaporeans were quite low at the, at the time. So we we're like, okay, you know what, we, we, let's try to do something, right? And like, that was such a nice project as well. So like we talked about you being on Lions 12 and you were one of the youngest players back then, you know, 17 years old and everything. So maybe you can bring us back to, you know, how it all started and how do you handle the expectations of going to your first you know, big comps yeah. as a player and everything. So, I mean, I would just basically just tell them like, okay, like, I'm here now. I would just build up from where I was, like, basically, to from a young sports school, or a young secondary school boy to just playing there right now. Like I say, it was a heavy burden for me, but again, it was good that my family was supportive of it, basically. Like. I think that's great. I think also because you're such a young age, there's yeah, obviously going to be room for growth and everything. Yeah. yeah, so how do you, like, cope with social media toxicity, how do you handle such instances of that? Okay, so back, okay, maybe when I was 18 years old, I took it so hard that um, I was just delete my Facebook, delete my Instagram. Yeah, so it got to a point where it's just too much for me to even look at it and to even think about it. Throughout the years of me playing football and having gone through so much negativity around me when I had a bad game, it's, it, it just, I just learned to just like, um, not care about all this and just block out whatever negativity around me. It's about taking the time to condition yourself and just be like, you know what, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I can't please you, but I'm just doing my best and yeah. And everyone always has an opinion on sports. Like, mm. some person eating potato chips on the couch also can suddenly become a football coach, okay? <laughs> yeah. So you just gotta deal with it. And last year, we, I was in the AFF Suzuki Cup where we lost against Indonesia. Yeah, so the amount of hate comments in my in DMs, it's, it was not nice and not pleasant um, comments yeah. they were giving. But it was just like I said, I'm not here to please anyone. So if you want to say something about me, you can, but I would just not care about it, obviously. You, know? yeah. you mean they like DM you to score you up? Yeah, the amount of comments I have on one post. Humanity. Was, <laughs> Humanity. <laughs> that's cool. quite a lot, yeah. Here is it already. Okay, so I mean, you mentioned you being a goalkeeper, mm -hmm. and being a goalkeeper is pretty stressful, you know, you're the last line of defence, yeah. if anything goes wrong, you, like the opposing team scores the goal, like everyone looks at you, you know, yeah. like how do you take that? Like? People will just look at you for your mistakes you've done in the, at the back of, I mean, at the back. So if you had a good game, you, you'll be okay. If you slip up, just one simple mistake, people will just keep, I mean, point the fingers at you. Okay, so the next few questions are before Joe specifically. So how do you define your role as an influencer? You know, I, I hear this term being thrown around a lot, like regarding you as a personality and how have you used this role to promote awareness for mental health issues and everything? Yeah. So actually the term influencer came from one of the followers. I didn't come up with it myself. I was like, well, I thought it was quite funny, lah, you know, it's like, haha. And then um, actually, fun fact, um, someone actually made fun of me on Twitter with that influencer term because they took it out of context. It's quite a prominent figure as well, old guy, but it's irrelevant. No, actually kidding. But I, I do find value in that term because I think that term influencer is funny because, and it's correct, because I do use it to spread information. So I was like, yeah, done. Along the way, I think a lot of people resonated with the way I was you know, expressing my thoughts 
sports and whatnot. So I got started to get invited to different types of projects surrounding mental health. Uh, so one of the more exciting projects that I did was with actually Instagram, the platform itself, and they actually ran a mental health campaign. And I was part of it uh, using the, the platform to then help you know, spread certain types of information. Um, and I collaborated with the Samaritans of Singapore on that as well. And uh, speaking of SOS, I actually also hosted one of the um, symposiums. So I did one of the dialogue sessions with the different social media platforms. And with that came a lot more opportunities like working with the Mental Health Collective and things like that. For me, one of the more important reasons why I decided to um, collaborate with professionals and organizations is because I feel like I don't know my I don't know the topic well enough myself, and I feel like with a with a topic like mental health, you must have someone who is experienced and you must have someone who knows what they're saying. Um, and I do feel like you know once you have a certain amount of following, you must use that responsibly. So that's why I felt like you know the partnerships should come. Mm, I think that's great. Yeah, because it's a lot of like disinformation online. Yeah. And, like anyone can be like an expert in something suddenly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's great that you're like making sure that things are like fact checked. Yeah, yeah for sure. definitely. As someone who has just graduated just a few years ago, you know, have you seen any differences between like stress levels or like just mental health awareness like then versus now? Even though it's just been a few years, I actually really wish that when I was a student, I would have initiatives like this to what? Unfortunately, back then, hustle culture was such a big thing. You know, everyone was kind of like taking pride in like overworking and taking pride in like, you know, sleeping very little and whatnot. And then as we all went through that, I think more and more the conversation came about like, why? Why are we pushing ourselves to the limit? Especially when at the end of the day, like your mental health should matter first, right? Like if you are going to be drained and you're not going to be at your peak performance, you, it's literally not sustainable in the long run. And we are here for the long run. So, so with more and more people speaking about that and normalizing the kind of conversations, then we realize that, hey, actually, you know what? Um, there is value to understanding and prioritizing mental health. Okay, so we just wrap up with the last question for the both of y'all. I think what advice will you give our audience and undergraduates out there in the aspect of taking care of their mental health and how can they take action to improve like their overall mental health in school? Okay, um, one advice I would give probably is say don't be afraid to speak up on whatever you're facing because it's nothing's too much for you to be sharing to whoever. I mean, like especially your parents, especially. So again, um, you must have like a like a good support system, basically. Like. So I actually think that there's a lot of like value in looking inwards and reflecting and having introspection because no one else can look at you and say, hey, your mental health today is not good. You know, it's really just you yourself understanding where you stand. So it's about maybe taking some time every day to journal, to just reflect and understand where you are mentally because maybe at certain days where you're on the downward spiral, when you do that self-introspection, you can be like, okay, I think I'm actually, you know, not feeling too good today. So only through stock taking like that, then you can understand, you know, where you stand personally. Another tip I have is actually to also participate in activities like going to SCAPE or you know these kind of like student organizations like NTUSU and understanding what kind of activities and campaigns are out there. And one thing, I mean this speaking from personal experience, is actually starting up projects of your own, being your own change maker in that sense, whereby you can go start your own pro like mental health project so that you can you know learn from the professionals firsthand and by kind of like processing the information and making it into different types of content, you're also actually learning it yourself. So I think that's actually one good way that it's not very common that people would know. I think those two advice are really great. I think it really does sum up like, our whole conversation today, like you know, making sure you talk to other people, don't hold it in. Yeah, yeah and like always like looking inward and making sure that you know you connect with yourself and you know who you are and your own worth. Yeah, I think that I think that's really good. I think that it really does you know, conclude this episode of Let's Talk. Thank you so much to our two guests for gracing this episode today. We really appreciate you coming down and taking the time to talk to us, yeah. Okay, we hope that you've learned a thing or two from our guests today on their experiences with mental health. For more information, you can head on to Youthopia by National Youth Council or Scape's webpage for more. Okay, we'll see you in our next episode and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye!